today we're coming to you from a bear city. Hello everyone and welcome to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Conservation Connect. I'm your host, Tiana Jones. We will learn about conservation careers, wildlife species, and the kinds of technology that are used to study and help wildlife. Black bears are the most common of the three bear species in North America. You can find them mainly in the forested regions of the country, like Western Maryland, home to a thriving population of black bears that we are about to meet. Today, we're lucky to have a real live bear biologist with us, Harry Spiker. Harry, how did you get into this kind of work? I mean, not very many people get the opportunity to work with bears. Well, Tiana, I I've knew since I was little that I wanted a, a career in conservation. And so uh, eventually, uh, after working a, a lot of side jobs, I went to college and uh, studied wildlife and fisheries science in college uh, until I, I eventually uh, got into this field and, and got to work with bears. That must be very rewarding. It, it is. It's a wonderful job. Roughly how many black bears do you get to work with? Well, we've got a little more than 2,000 uh, adult and subadult bears here in Western Maryland. Wow, so you get to look out for more than 2,000 adult bears. That must be a lot of work. I do, and there's a lot that goes into it. Uh, today we're out here doing a reproductive survey, um, but there's a lot of work we do year-round uh, that deals with habitat, making sure that the bears have appropriate habitat. And a lot of a bear biologist's work these days is dealing with the human-bear interaction side of things okay. and uh, trying to manage the population at a suitable level for people. What are some cool facts about black bears that some people may not know? Well, uh, there's actually a lot of color variation in black bears. Here, if you'll hold this, um, there are also some some color variations. You notice the white marking on that bear. Um, there's a lot of genetic variation. What you'll see uh, out in the western United States, you'll see more color phases like brown or cinnamon or even blonde black bears. They can even be white. But here in Maryland, just about all you'll see are these black ones like this. They're also omnivores. They eat just about anything. Um, and they're opportunistic feeders. And here in, in western Maryland, uh, their single most important food source is acorns, believe it or not. What about those cute and fuzzy little cubs? When are they born? Well, these guys would have been born in January, um, maybe, maybe as, as late as February. So this guy's probably about eight weeks old now. And uh, their, their breeding cycle is really interesting. Bears are, are what's called a delayed implanter, meaning even though they bred last summer, the uh, fertilized egg didn't implant on the uterus wall in that female until November. So this bear was only a half a pound to a pound when it was born. Wow. And in those six to eight weeks it's been alive, it's grown from that half pound to a pound to six to eight pounds. Wow. So Harry, what are some of the technology and equipment that are used to study bears? We use a lot of technologies these days. Uh, here are two different types of radio collars that we use. Thank you, Tiana. Uh, this is a VHF radio collar. It sends out just a radio wave that we can pick up with the specialized receiver and antenna. That's what the bear that we work today is wearing. This one, in addition to the radio waves, uh, also has a GPS on it. So that's what this so is? So that's what that is, and that will send a GPS location twice a day to a satellite up in the sky, okay. and I can sit at my computer and find out where that bear has been today. Before our interview, Harry's team used their technology to identify a female black bear dealing with her four bear cubs. Once on site, we divided into two groups. Half of our team worked with Dr. Sander, who provided medical attention to the mama bear. The second half of our team assisted Dr. Driscoll, who performed health checks for the four bear cubs. We ensured that they were in good condition and properly tagged for tracking. These methods are used by scientists who study black bears all around the country. If you learned something new today, spread the word. Share a cool fact with your family or friends about black bears. Now please bear with us as Lauren has some good advice. We have black bears in 38 states. 
So remember to never feed a bear. This can make them less fearful of humans and can put them at risk if they start to associate people with food. The solution is to learn how to properly store food when bears are around. For instance, you can use bear-proof containers like these when camping in bear country. Thanks, Lauren, and thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Conservation Connect.